show. We're going to walk through the process of moving your website from one web host to another. But first, let's talk about hard drives. More specifically, just when you think the whole solid state rotating hard drive thing can't get any messier, we get this question from Hamid. He writes in, are hybrid hard drives out yet? You know, so I can use Vista Ready Drive, the tech that where the computer loads some of the operating system off into the flash chip of the drive to help the PC boot faster. I really want to see this in action. Hamid, we figure we go to our favorite source of all things SSD and on Chippy from Anontech.com. Welcome back to Techzilla, Anon. Hey, thanks for having me. I, I, should we start by explaining what a hybrid drive is, since it's like one of those concepts that was like everybody was talking about for six months, and then it just it just seemed to go away. So the idea behind a hybrid drive is you have a single drive, and inside the drive you've got both uh, rotating mechanical storage and uh, solid state NAND flash storage. Um, and the idea is that either the intelligence is in the OS or it's in the drive itself, but it puts the things that you're actually using in the flash part of the storage and uh, the things that you're not using uh, very frequently access stuff like that, uh, it puts in the mechanical storage. Um, the idea is that you get the best of both worlds and you don't need to worry about managing data. Because right now, the, the, the solution that I advocate is you basically have an SSD that has your OS and your apps on it, um, and then all of your media files and uh, maybe your games, stuff like that, go on your mechanical drive. Um, which means you've got two drive letters, you've got to you know, partition stuff. You, you just have to play, you know, you have to pay attention to it. You have to do a little bit of work. Um, in theory, the hybrid drive takes care of all of that. Uh, have we seen any in practice? No, because the problem is that SSDs and NAND flash in general are still very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so tacking that on to, tacking any meaningful amount of NAND flash onto a mechanical drive uh, just skyrockets the price, right? And, and no one wants that. What they want is... Uh, a terabyte drive, but you pay like maybe an extra thirty percent, and you get an SSD in it, and uh, just the, the the economies of scale are are not quite there yet. So if you're thinking about an SSD drive or a, upgrading your hard drive at this point, go ahead. It's not like hybrid drives are going to show up this summer. I mean, you might have some solutions. I just I don't you know I haven't tried them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and I hate to say it, there's just a lot that can go wrong with these things, right? right? You know, it's it's just not worth it at this point. Um, you know, and it's pretty simple, right? If you follow the basic rules, you keep your page file, you keep your applications, and you keep your OS on the SSD, and then anything that is just like media, so your movies, your your videos, and even large games, right? A World of Warcraft installation is like 20 gigs. Um, you know. You, when on a device that you're paying multiple dollars per gigabyte, you don't want to put WoW on your SSD. Um, you <laughs> no. put those on like a $70 hard drive, and the rest goes on your $300 SSD, um, and you'll reap the benefits, right? One of the biggest benefits of an SSD is uh, you start up your computer, and, and all the apps launch like they were just in memory. Mm -hmm. um, so anything that is a pain to start up and you start up frequently, uh, just throw it on your SSD. How, what do you think in these days? I, I, I think I saw a new SSD drive waving by the screen earlier. What are your picks? What, what has you excited with SSD drives right now? So here's the thing about SSDs. There are the, the SSDs that are interesting, that are exciting, that are coming out soon. Mm -hmm. And then there are the ones that you're going to buy. And the <laughs> ones that you're going to buy, honestly, my recommendations haven't changed. Okay. Um, the, the best overall drive is still Intel's X25M. Um, you know, I've, I've gone through, I've used a lot of these in my own mach machines. I, I use them all in my test beds. Uh, if you can afford them, the X25M is great. Uh, if you're running uh, Windows 7 or Windows XP or Windows Vista, um, the Indolinx based drives are a decent lower priced alternative. Um, so these are like the OCZ Vertex line, the OCZ Agility line, the Corsair Extreme series. Uh, G Skill Falcon, Falcon 2, like all, all those uh, Indolink space drives. So those are the recommendations. Now, what's coming? Uh, we've got a, a company called Sandforce, and uh, they actually uh, are working with companies like OCZ, Corsair, all these, all the uh, uh, the SSD makers out now. Uh, they're sampling them with uh, this new controller they have. They, they've got two versions of it, the SF1200 and SF1500. Now, these are enterprise-level controllers. Mm -hmm. um, and the rumor is that Sandforce is the company that's making Seagate's first SSDs. These are actually really, really interesting controllers. Um, the way they get around some of the inherent problems and performance issues with NAND flash is uh, they basically write less to the drive. Really, um, and the way it works is, yeah, it's it's kind of neat. Um, if you look at how compression works, mm -hmm. right? So with with uh, uh, lossless compression, you have a certain amount of data, and you simply represent it with a smaller amount of data. Mm -hmm. 
And that's effectively what Sandforce's controller does. It uses a bunch of things, deduplication, uh, compression, stuff like that, to take the writes that you, you write to the drive, say you install Office or you install Windows, and it finds a way to represent that data with a smaller amount of data. Oh, in real wow. Time. So you effectively, you kind of hack your way to an increased write speed and a longer lifespan on the drive. The Sandforce space stuff is really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and then the one I held up is this little baby, uh, which is a new drive. Uh, they'll look the same, but um, it's a new drive from Crucial. Um, uh, Crucial and Micron both make the drive. It's called the Real SSD C300. <laughs> um, what makes this interesting, uh, you know, they don't do any of the weird Sandforce stuff where, you know, I mean, they, they, this drive is more, more akin to the Intel and the Interlinks drives. Mm -hmm. uh, what makes this one interesting is it's the first native 6 gigabit SATA drive on the market. Um, Can it actually uh, use that, that pipe? Can it use the, does it use, is it taking advantage of, of the, the SATA 6 potential? Absolutely. So if you look at the best SATA 3 gigabit um, SSDs on the market, their sequential read speed is pretty much limited to about 260 megs per second, mm -hmm. which is a ton, right? Like that's super fast for a single drive. Um, this thing can break, you know, 340, 350. Wow. Uh, yeah, to do that, obviously, you need a SATA 6 gigabit controller, which is coming on, you know, a ton of gigabyte boards, a lot mm -hmm. of ASUS boards, or you can buy, you know, one of these, like, little add-in cards. Um, and what I've seen, at least in the I.O. bound tests, like, you're looking at, like, 20 to 40 percent better performance just by going to 6 gigabit versus 3 gigabit. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today, Anand. Awesome, awesome info, as always. Anandtech.com is the website. If you haven't been there, you should go there right now. It is really, really jam-packed with good stuff.